Um, just uh, you know, um, uh, looking ahead, what are some of the things you want to do to to um, uh, what was your view of the synchronization with the passing part of the offense? You know, we running game, is, we saw that, and passing game is saw some of that too. But there's there some things there that you saw that we might want to look out for moving on down the road here. Uh, there's always things you know you're looking for, D-Led. You know how you want to attack somebody with the game plan going in, how, how you can adapt. Um, but there's always you know, critical lessons learned, whether you, whether you win the game or you lose the game. And that's certainly our approach. Um, that's, that's pretty much the you know, best way I can answer that for you. When you're facing a team that's going to potentially have three new starters on the offensive line, how, does that change anything in, in how you guys approach things defensively? Well, I mean, every week there's matchups. You know, you're, you're looking at it, both teams. You know, they you spend a lot of time uh, studying and where do you think you can get an advantage and or vice versa. So um, you, you look at everything, Mike, you know, the scheme, personnel, uh, the play callers, all that stuff you take into account as you form your plans. You've spoken a couple times over the course of the last early part of this week about this team having the right mindset. That was something that you said mm -hmm. a couple of times. How can this team indicate that to you this week, showing you that right mindset? Yeah, it's how you you approach every day, you know. And so you come in there and um, you talk about learning from from mistakes. And I think you you always got to have the right mindset. Uh, obviously, when you need to, to let the emotion take the emotion out of it clearly, and then you look at it and you try to look at it very objectively as best you can. And you've got to be very critical of yourself. And I know I've always said it a million times, and it's not to be a martyr or, or some you know line you're supposed to say, but that's what you're supposed to do as a head coach. And so you look at every game, and the whole climb is, can we improve? Can you adapt and understand some issues? Can you can get away with certain things? And it may not cost you then, but if you're not being critical and objective, it'll come back to you at some point. So that's kind of how you approach, you approach every day. You need to be consistent in taking that and um, not all of a sudden think you got all the answers if you if you win and certainly not act like a, a victim if you lose and that you know you're hopeless sometimes I mean that that's a, kind of carries over to life too is it fair to say that like kind of the first couple weeks of the the season feel more like preseason just for you guys since the, the whole team doesn't really play and it maybe um, like it's better week four no I, I don't necessarily look at it like that I mean you could make a great argument uh, for certain teams or this or that but I don't think that's look at it as a preseason, I think there's a lot, there's an evolution that happens. Uh, it's 17 games, it's a long season, 16 long. Uh, you know, people used to famously say hey, four quarters and whatever. I mean, things can change in a, in a, in a heartbeat for you. you adapt, injuries, um, that can you know, have a ripple effect on the personnel and where you, where you got to play guys. Uh, I, I, as long as I'm in this and you really study the teams that have been very successful, the ones that keep keep improving and climbing as the year goes on. So sometimes in September, you may uh, things may be working for you this way, but if you don't stay top and, and evolve, um, they'll catch up to you because you'll get stale. When, uh, I want to go back to Saturday for a minute. Like a lot of the two-back stuff you ran, how much of that was altered because Damian was hurt when you're using Keith and, and Parker maybe in certain situations? Was that Were those maybe situations you would have used Cordero and Damian together or? Yeah, I'm not gonna get this game, nah, Mike. No, I don't. I don't mind you asking. Ask uh, yeah, no, I don't. I appreciate the questions, like I said, but uh, I'm not gonna get into the scheme. When it comes to giving up like uh, leads in the second half, does that come down to play calling? Um, I don't know, not enough hitting, tackling, practice. Uh, what I mean, what is that kind of mental lapses? Uh, there's a lot of variables. Uh, I mean, you go through the game, and and what will never change is if you know you you've got to take adva take advantage of situational football. Um, and there's a reason it's four quarters. It's the NFL. The reason most of these games come down to one possession, one way or another. There's a lot of good players, a lot of good coaches, and then you got it. You got opportunities. Nobody's making a mistake on purpose, but you don't capitalize in the red zone. It usually comes back. You look at red zone. Certainly, you can look at third down. Um, you know, end of half in the games. So that's why you got to stay dialed in. Um, you know, if you want to go back to look at Sunday, like you said, I mean the. The easy narrative is to blame one play. That's never the way it goes. There's a cause and effect to everything that can lead to these situations. 
Mm-hmm. So you go back and you need to make sure you win situational football. That being said, when you do roll back the tape on Sunday, what are things that you see specifically, whether it's stuff that you can do better, the players executing on the field better, what are those things that you guys want to do better late games? Well, it's the whole game. I mean, that's, just, that's what essentially where they can catch up to you. You go back and you got opportunities, whether it's in the second quarter, and you know you only come away, you get in the red zone, you only come away with three points. That can that can that can hurt you. Um, you know, I thought we we did a decent job at the end of the half. We we're able to, to handle that situation, and then you get on. They're going to change on you quick. You get down in the third quarter. Again, you got a chance down there. More so, we turn the ball over. We get down there again. Um, we don't capitalize. We settle for three. Those usually add up. Um, now you get into the fourth quarter, you know, come down to play here or there. I mean, there's a lot of little things that, that add up. And, and the thing that you got to be careful on and you got to be realistic, you got to give New Orleans credit too. They got good players over there. Some of them came down to one on one, they made a play. Uh, but we'll, we look at everything and coach to look to improve. Because even if you go back and you win games like that, you want to rationalize that, oh, yeah, it, you know, say, say who hits a field goal. We still got issues and details you got to clean up, regardless of, of the outcome of the game, and that's the hardest thing. And then where you got to stay disciplined to look at that, to be objectively, to be objective. Excuse me. So that's that's really what it comes comes down to. You know the sensationalist, again, emotional things. You want to blame one call, want to blame one play. There's always things that we can do to improve. And if you take hard lessons that can be painful, and you learn from them and improve, we'll be much better for it. And that's what you've got to, that's the challenge every day. The worst thing you can do is, is to feel like you're a victim and blame somebody, blame this circumstance, blame that. that we're not going to do that. We always look at it objectively and see what we can improve to get better. And that's why you, you kind of love the cycle of the week because now we're here. We need to get ready to play the Rams, who are a great football team, well coached, and they got a lot of good players. Uh, kind of a, a philosophical question. When it sure. comes to coaching, is it easier to coach? When you have a, a, a decent lead, or is it easier to coach when you're coming from behind? There's challenges either way. You know, there, there's, there's always going to be challenges. It's the most competitive league uh, to me in all professional sports. And uh, it's, a, it's a fun game to dissect because everybody thinks they're, you know, they got all the answers or, or, you know, you think you've got something figured out, even as a coach. And... The other side, as I say, adapt, and as you as you look through it, uh, that's what makes it fun. Um, but again, we'll we'll go back to be being objective, whether we win or lose. I don't think there's, I never look at something easy or hard. It's a, uh, I told it, I said this the other day. Like I do, when I wake up, at, like it's a privilege to be able to to coach in the National Football League and to be part and go out and compete against the best. Not to keep but when you go back and you look offensively, you're talking about it now, the red zone issues and then stuff on third down. Is there one thing that particularly bothered you? Because you're, no, you're- it bothers you. I don't think those are issues. I mean, things happen, right? Nobody intentionally wants to turn the ball over. Nobody, in, you know, whatever, you know, misses something here or there. Like I said, a lot of things the other team has to say on it, right? There's things we can improve and you gotta, you gotta be objective with the other side too. They have a say and they give credit to them. Um, there's always things is that that you look at uh, the situation. If you've done this or that, yeah, I think that's that's normal, regardless of the outcome. So uh, there's not one particular thing that bothered me. And now that you've had a chance to go back and look at Marcus and his first performance in a Falcons uniform, what was it about it that you know maybe gave you some hope for the rest of the season? Well, I mean, you know, and. I guess as you look at it and you, you try to move forward, but to, to answer your question, I mean, there's a, there, there were a lot of positives. Um, and you don't want to sit there and make excuses, and that's why I'm trying to be careful because you don't want to sound like, oh, yeah, you're patting yourself and, you know, because we don't know, know what the end result was, but there were. There, there was, uh, I thought we were pretty effective moving the football. I thought he made some really good decisions for us. Um, so it was good to see. You know, he hadn't started a game. Uh, he started one game, I think, in the last two and a half years, give or take. He was dialed in. He was ready to go. Uh, made some big time throws when we when we needed him, and uh, certainly made some plays with his legs. And, and there's a lot of things we ask him to do with the line of scrimmage. Arthur, you hear a lot about uh, you know, coaches 
between trees in the NFL. You're mm -hmm. only a few degrees removed from, from Sean McVay. Uh, what is it like? Do you, do you see similarities, first of all, when you watch what they're doing? For those of us that can't identify scheme right away between what you guys are trying to do and what, what they do in LA. I, I think it's a lot like when people settle in certain places and um, kind of migrate, in other words, like you start trying to evolve and, and you kind of create your own culture and it happens all over the league. And I mean, you look at the history of this game, whether people were coaching with Paul Brown and they broke off, you know, and you trace it back to Paul Brown and Bill Walsh and everybody from there, or Sid Gilman, you know, you could go a lot of different ways with it. But um, a lot of coaches, I mean, once you're in the NFL and if you have success, you're going to cross paths with people. Um, I've got a ton of respect for Sean. Uh, I've never worked with him, know him decently well. But I don't – that is kind of easy when people say, oh, this is like that. It's usually not the case. Like everybody in the league has some kind of zone run. Uh, you know, how they teach it, the details of it, how you evolve, or maybe you, 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 know, you change some things up. Um, most coaches I've been with, they use every experience and what they like, they don't. And that's kind of how it naturally just kind of migrates. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. But just a uh, follow-up, I think – you were on his podcast, or you were on the same podcast last year, and he said he'd been copying your plays in, in Tennessee for years. One, have you ever seen that happen? Like, hey, that's one of mine. And two, is he somebody that you watch for ideas like that? His, uh, you know, the system they have out there is that something that you do try to draw from what other coaches are doing? Yeah, I did that one, uh, the podcast with him and Peter Schrager. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think a lot of people. I mean, it's just so much easier to watch, to access film. I think back in. Not to get you too nostalgic here, but you know, one of the eight millimeter films, or you know, you had the stories of people cutting things out of films, um, so the opponent couldn't see it, and then you had the, you know, the tape was delivered Sunday morning, and you didn't, you may not have all the tapes, and now everything, I mean, you can subscribe online and and watch everybody's tape. We we all have access to it from the from a library, so I think it's, and then there's so much data that's poured into it now, when the original quality controls like. That was a very uh, time-consuming, you know, you're taking the sheet and you're typing in you know, first and 10. And, and I'm glad I did all that because it does teach you as you slow down and you, and you break it down. Now they have all these other secondary outsources and they can pour data in and you can search for certain things. And, uh, and the one thing about football, it's you always got to take it with a grain of salt because unless you're in those meeting rooms, you may see a play that's similar, but you may teach it differently. You may teach the read differently. Well, yeah, you run this play. I run it, but I may have evolved to teach it the starting point here, there. So there's a lot of variables there. Um, so it, it's so much easier to watch it, right? A lot of people, they get the, let me get the touchdowns around the league. I can go in my office right now and it'll take me about three seconds to pull up all the touchdowns from week one. That used to be a way more of a challenge. You may try to see a highlight you see on, on the old, you know, news, sports center, whatever it was, try to get a copy of the tape. Now it's all right at your fingertip. So I think you see a lot of people, they do see more plays that come across your desk. Uh, good ideas, I see them in college too, when you get in the spring. I think that's, m most coaches, you, you, I know it's a very long answer, but there's a lot of context to it. You end up seeing a lot of, a lot of crossover, more than you really would have certainly 20 years ago. Which out is the, uh, the Rams defense with Aaron Donald uh, for you guys on Sunday? You just kind of said it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great player. Um, Probably one of the most dominant players in the last decade in this league. Uh, we got a ton of respect for him, but there's there's a challenge every week. You know, it's what makes it fun, and uh, you know our guys are excited about the challenge. I was going to ask about the offensive line and that challenge. Obviously, is a big one. But what did you like from them on Sunday? You know, they kind of took a leap forward, at least from an outsider's sure. perspective. What did you like about what they there's did? There's a lot to like, you know. And then again, perspective. It was one game, and and the challenge is, can we get better, and can we? have more success or, you know, do it again. And, uh, you know, it's a different scheme that we'll see Sunday, uh, different players. And uh, so, yeah, there was, there was a lot of, there was a lot that you liked out of it. At the end of the day, we got to make one more play. And that's what it came down to. But, but there's a lot of positives there. What is it that makes Cooper Cup so difficult, I guess, for opposing defenses to deal with? On well, I mean, I think, you know, what he does a, a pretty good job of is he knows how to feel avoids in the zones and what they ask him to do. You know, some guys, they, they got that feel where he, uh, whether they call choice routes where he's got three options on a route, drop back, and he's going to basically go where you're not. 
by my man. You know, he knows how to get open, knows how to very crafty leverage. And so that can make him difficult. So when you get a players like that, and guys that historically can work in the slot, they can take advantage. Maybe it's as simple as they're going to be where you're not. So you know, Van Zoid, he knows enough. And he's very smart. That's what you can tell about instinct. And he knows where to find those voids and snap it down. And understanding the coverages. And that happens over time. And there's been some really good players in that kind of role. Uh, you think of Heinz Ward and what he did in Pittsburgh in the 2000s on those kind of inside the numbers routes. Wes Welker, certainly. Um, been a lot of good players. I could keep going on and on, but Cup certainly has that feel. And, and that's a credit to him. You know, a receiver or an offense to have when you have a guy that, like you said, can figure out where the defense isn't because not every receiver can. Yeah, and a lot of times you won't ask guys to do that. There's guys you do when you when you do, and that's what makes those guys special. And it doesn't mean there's not other great players that may not run those routes because there's certainly a lot of ways to, to be productive in this league. Uh, but that's one that just jumps out at you. With CP being on the – different veteran plan that y'all had him on over the course of the offseason and preseason and then for him to come out and do what he did on Sunday. What does that say about, I guess, like his conviction to do the work on his own um, instead of being like constantly having to perform in training camp in the preseason? Does that make sense? Is that like- Well, no, he practiced really hard in preseason. Like, I mean, it's like a lot of players, they all got to get ready to go. It's a tough game and you got to put the work in. You can't skip the steps. So when you kind of modify things in certain players because of where they're at their career or they're dealing with an injury, they're still getting work in. And we, we try to make sure we're as diligent as possible. we got a plan for everybody. Uh, nobody's sitting around in a, in a bucket hat with a script pretending to be a coach. They're working. When their teammates are working, they're working. And you can modify things, and that's a credit to our uh, sports performance staff and everybody as we go through it, and we try to do what's best for the player. Uh, but like all our guys, they, they – these guys uh, work hard and, and they're diligent about it, and, and CP fits right into that program. What did Bobby Wagner add to their defense? Yeah, he's got intelligence, obviously, instinct, made him a very productive player. Um, similar to DeMario, you know, they, the, not the first time they've seen most of these, the stuff we throw at them. Uh, got great experience, tough, uh, makes plays all over the tape. Got a lot of respect for him as well. How unusual is it for you? I mean, you've been around a lot of football for a guy to seemingly look better as he ages, especially at his age now. I mean, it looked like he was like 21 out there on Sunday. Like what, he's like a bottle of Opus One? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it's a challenge, right? But, uh, maybe I can find some of that in myself. So when I, I age, I can look younger. Certainly that's uh, trending around society. Um, <laughs> No, it's it's just, you know, you try to uh, – it's a credit to CP and the work he's put in, and we just got to keep trying to push and put our players in the right spots and to have success.